Hey everybody, hopefully you can hear me just fine and welcome to the lunch break, Saturday lunch break preview, book preview. I am a little nervous. <laughs> this is this is the first time I've been doing something like this on a Saturday and I'm hoping that you can hear me okay. If, if anybody's there, it looks like at least one person is joining me right now. If you can hear me fine, just type something in the chat. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, so we can get started. What I was hoping to do today is use something, is an app that I'm a beta tester for called Mm-hmm. It's actually called Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I'll show you real quick what that is by doing a screen share. So here we go. I'll try a screen share, and, and obviously this is my first time trying it. So I'll share it. I'll share my song. Let's see if I can do it. Here, hopefully you can... If you can see the screen share, hopefully, um, let's try this. I'm still figuring this out. <laughs> uh, and what I want to show you is my first slide, but it's not quite, let's see here. Um, this is my first slide, so you can see, you can see my little face appearing, but I can make myself bigger. Oh my gosh. And what's cool about this app is be soon it's usable for Zoom meetings and for um, Google meetings too. And I can make myself a, a circle like this. I can be, it's not great all the time for kind of a green screen, like a fake green screen or just a, this sort of block. But I can also change the rooms and I can, um, Let's see if I can try it here. I'm having a little technical difficulty. Um, let's see. Oh, that's my other that's my other stuff for for November fourth. But I can change rooms, as you might be able to see right here. I can make my background. Let me. I can shrink everything down. I can and I can make my background different things. Uh, like my sandy background and I can shrink myself up so you can see different things and enlarge different things like this. Um, it's really cool and, and uh, today we're going to hear from uh, the author of this book over here. Whoop! Let me go away. Uh, there we go. Great Belonging. This is going to be the December reading for the book club and also the November this guy right here, Ed Szeski, is going to be the author we're going to read for Reconnect. This book is really going to be very apropos for the for the kind of things that we're going to be needing to do is spiritually um, reconnect. The thing he says on here, at the root of our struggle to use social media and smartphones well are the very good qualities that make us human. Rational beings created in God's image, we crave socializing, interaction, acceptance, and the simple joy of knowing we belong. And so his book, Reconnect, is part of the next book club for November coming up tomorrow is November and then he will be talking about it with us live June not June December 2nd and that's going to be a lot of fun another thing I can do with this um, pointer this I, look I can kind of make myself smaller of course but I can also disappear Ooh, <laughs> as a beta tester I'm supposed to be doing all this and, and checking out to see if it works so thank you for putting up with that for me for a second and I'll cancel that now. Hopefully you see me back. We don't see your screen. Oh, okay, Noel, thank you so much. I, I wish I would have. <laughs> I wish I would have uh, known that, for, seen that first. Okay, so, um, yeah, let me just, uh, if I can't share my screen, hmm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what we're going to do, but um, I wanted to mention that the book club meeting for the book this time is called I See You by Terrence Lester. And here, here's the what the book looks like. And this is going to be on Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. And Terrence will be here with us to talk about his amazing charity called Love Beyond Walls and also Love Sinks In. And this has gotten national and international uh, awards and, and credit 
and exposure. And I'm just so happy for Terrence and so proud of him doing such amazing work in Atlanta, but also in California, Australia, London, and California, where there's a huge homeless problem in LA, about 68,000 homeless people. So thank you for joining today where we can see, oh good, I see Charlotte's here. And yep, good. Uh, so this is going to be recorded so everybody can enjoy it afterwards. And there aren't too many people here on a Saturday. I'm sure people have other things to do, but around here it's ice cold. <laughs> and so, um, all right, let's see. So yes, the next book is something I've featured several times already on the podcast, Reconnect, Spiritual Restoration from Digital Distraction. And this book is it's very immediately practical. It has a lot of wisdom in it, but it's also um, not just immediately practical for our times, but it really helps with spiritual formation and looking and seeing things differently from a spiritual perspective. This would be a pretty good a small group book and also good for a spiritual director to use with someone who really struggles with always being on their phone and using technology too much and having dopamine cycles, which is something that I've fallen into and a great many of us have. Uh, so I guess I, I can't use the app. I won't be using those slides, but I wanted to also um, see if we can see if we can have Charlotte come on here too at some point. Charlotte, are you able or ready to come on? If you've tested, if you go up to this link in the top, you will see I can't we can't. I'm here. Okay, okay, I'm here. Okay, if you go to the top and you've already tried your setup feature, your setup test, then I can be sure that you're you actually will be on here, and and then I can click you and invite you in. Let me just try that here. Um, and I can do that by I tested good. Okay, let's see if this works. This will be the first time I've tried this. And I will send you an invitation, and I think you just click on it. It's a little prompt. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for coming on. Hi. It's good Hello. To see you. Good to see you too. And you look so adorable. Oh, thanks. This is um, a shirt I slept in. I'm still not done. But... <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is a Saturday like chill fest. Well, I'm yeah. I'm in total total like it looks like I'm in pajamas even though this is just what I wear every day but um, I got something I don't know if everybody could see this and I I ordered I, I designed something and I had it sent to me and I don't know if you could see it but it says breathe in and breathe out it's like God's name Yahweh and, it, okay. and Richard Rohr talks about that that uh, God's name sounds like breathing and I, mm -hmm. I always was really enchanted by that idea that that God's name can be on our breath or like a breath prayer. And so I kind of did that to remember, but maybe I should have put it in reverse so that if I see myself in a mirror, I'll be like, all oh, right, yeah, that's it. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> so for anybody who is watching this, let's see if I can find. Uh, oh no, where'd, the, where'd my book go? Oh, wait. Oh, okay, it's under my stack of stuff. This is my copy, and I've really, really enjoyed this book, and we've already done an interview that's going to be out in late November. Charlotte's going to be my guest, but this is also the book pick for December, so that we can read it for the book club in December, and then have Charlotte on to talk about it in January on the 6th for the book club on Wednesday the 6th, and I hope that people can either watch a replay of it if they can't come or um, read it for themselves and write down some questions they'd like to ask. But as a way to give people a taste test, maybe you can talk a little bit about, uh, just a little bit about the process of the book, kind of like we did on the podcast, but maybe in a shorter way or something. And um, and just introduce people to the book and maybe the introduction or whatever you think would, would help people get a taste of what's coming up. Okay. Great. Yes. So um, this book explores loneliness and belonging, and I would say it's different um, angles of loneliness and belonging. I don't try to solve the problem of loneliness. 
because I don't think it can be solved. And there are different types of loneliness um, and our experiences of loneliness can shift based on our circumstances and our um, seasons of life and even how our relationships might be shifting. Um, but my hope with this book is that people will um, realize that loneliness is normal and would be more willing to have conversations about it and notice um, the ways they're lonely and notice the way God meets them in their loneliness and notice new ways they belong to themselves, to others, and to God. Um, the different sections in the book are um, belonging to ourselves, belonging to each other, belonging to our places, belonging through art, and belonging to God. So I believe the main ways we can belong are to ourselves, others, and God, but there are other things, other belongings um, that take us deeper into those primary belongings, and the three um, or two that are most uh, meaningful to me are place and art. Now, there are probably dozens of other things people could fit into that bucket, um, but I couldn't write a book that, <laughs> that many pages. <laughs> so, um, do you want me to read the introduction now? Exactly. Or do you have any other, anything well, else you want me to say about it? One of the things I want to make sure that people can do, whether they want to jump on screen or not, is that you can ask Charlotte questions because this is a nice format for interaction. And so you can either do that by clicking the ask a question um, thing down at the bottom there, which you can also ask me questions too. Um, or you can type your question in the little say something nice box and they they have nice in there because they don't want anything to get <laughs> they don't want anything to get ugly like twitter um, and then or you can um so you can do that either way or you can come up on screen and ask a question and so there's plenty of ways to interact that way and i asked a question uh just to kind of break the ice to show show what you can do here and you can also vote questions up or down like if there's say there's 20 questions and some of them will rise to the top as more interesting to people. So I, I have a question for you that I'll, um, that I'll pose that I wrote down myself just kind of on the fly. Is that are you doing any, class, any classes or anything that readers can join in with you uh, to feel less alone? Um, I don't have any classes scheduled now. If there is a demand for that, I will um, consider it. Mm -hmm. But um, with pandemic life and mental health issues and my father dying, I just, the thought of adding one more thing um, yeah. is really overwhelming. Yeah. But if after the first of the year, that's something that the readers would want, I would definitely look into doing that. Yeah. So they could just contact you and say, let's do something or something like that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm definitely willing to do stuff like this. Yeah. Um, calls with, um, book clubs or Bible studies or yeah. writing groups even to talk about, you know, the like writing about spiritual things. Um, mm -hmm. I love talking about the craft of writing. Um, yeah, I'm definitely open to Zoom mm -hmm. meetings. And even if it's just a few people, you yeah. know, you and your two best friends read the book and want to talk about it, I'm, I'm open. Yeah, that could be really fun just to get, you can get your little snacks, get your little beverages, and then just be able to talk directly with the author. It can be really a fun, kind of a fun evening or something to do that's um, that's not as isolating in this, not as lonely. And it's a way yeah. to connect even just based on that commonality. Um, that's something we talked about in the, in the uh, conversation that we had, that sometimes that core wound doesn't get completely addressed or completely healed, but that even talking about that similar journey of loneliness and isolation is a point of connection and is a point of bonding. Yeah. So that makes it the journey easier. Mm -hmm. So it would be great if you could read a little bit uh, from the book in, in some place that you'd like to. Okay, I think the introduction is a good place and it's not very long. Um, Sometimes I wonder if loneliness resides in an extra secret organ within the body, maybe the size of a plum, a storehouse of dense alienation hidden deep within us. I wonder if God knew we'd need a special place for our loneliness because we would have so much of it. Everyone knows loneliness. Some may experience it more often. Some may find relief from it more quickly. 
some may deny or avoid it. But I don't think any of us escapes its company entirely, and I'm no longer sure we should, though I spent many years trying to outrun loneliness and her cunning charms. Indeed, being human requires a touch of loneliness. None of us will ever be fully known by another person. None of us will ever fully know or belong to another person or even to ourselves. This doesn't mean we should stop trying to know, be known, and belong. Rather, it means we can accept loneliness as a normal companion. We can inhabit a posture of curiosity when we recognize loneliness and our responses to it as part of the human condition. Hmm. We can wonder how our different forms of loneliness and our belongings are connected. While I was finishing this book, we were sheltering in place at home because of the global pandemic. Loneliness of all kinds spiked. Many of us began to wonder, is my relationship with God affected by my inability to visit my best friend? Is my relationship with myself affected because I can't chat with neighbors at the grocery store? Is my relationship with my husband affected because we haven't been able to pray, worship, and take communion at church? As everything begins to settle into different patterns, we can be curious about our new belongings. We can ask, even though our familiar belongings are shifting and fading, what new belongings are being formed? What are some of the new ways I'm belonging to myself, others, and God? We can dip our toes into the waters of loneliness and test the temperature. If it's comfortable or bearable, we can dive in. If the water seems too cold, we can wade in slowly one step at a time. When we are submerged and ready, we can swim around and discover how it feels to move toward and through the deeper waters. And we can do all of this knowing we can climb out of the water at any time. We can dive for the bright plastic circles of insight laying way down deep on the bottom. We can float on a raft and consider the shapes of the clouds in the blue sky above. We can notice who else is in the water with us. We can study their strokes, and determine how long it takes them to get from where they are to where they want to be. And together we can make our way to whatever might be waiting for us. Thank you for wading into the waters of loneliness with me. I pray we arrive on the other side full of hope. Okay. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. I was gonna also ask you, um, how did I get you tiny and me big? I don't know. <laughs> there we go. Um, when you say the charms of loneliness, that is such an interesting turn of phrase, such an interesting choice of word. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you find that there there is a seduction? I mean, is that what you're referring to, that there is also a seduction that loneliness has for maybe the the parts of us that in a sense don't want to be touched don't want to be connected and that that's um i don't know maybe i should just let you talk about it instead of trying to explain yeah. what i'm trying to say um i would say her trying to escape loneliness and um i want to say like the lies of loneliness or the um I would say cunning charms is more of lies or misrepresentations. And that could be in many ways. <laughs> um, because sometimes yeah. loneliness is disguised as something else. Um, sometimes um, it points to things that we want to ignore. Um, sometimes it is easy to wallow in loneliness as an introvert or just as someone that feels so different from so many people, it can be a way to pull back and um, an excuse to pull back. So I, I mean, I feel like that term, her cunning charm could apply to a lot of different things and maybe readers will even read it and it will mean something different to them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see what you mean. I, I, when I first read it, when I heard you read it, I thought, there's something like a seduction of of charms and and i know that there's a lot of different ways you could read it and i probably just read it how i how it made sense to me because uh, there is a uh i've had trouble with depression too and there is a 
there's the kind that, that you're in a hole and no matter what you how you dig you feel like you only get deeper in it and you can't and you only know how bad it's been when you're out of it and you're like wow that was that was pretty horrible and there was nothing I couldn't think my way out of that or anything right mm -hmm. and there's also a kind that maybe is more circumstantial sometimes circumstances we choose sometimes circumstances that we don't choose and sometimes a combo where we're just sort of stuck and loneliness is part of it and we're also just kind of like Wah. I just I don't I don't want to talk to anybody but I'm also not going to make the effort it's it's one of those things um it's a spiritual um it's it's one of the spiritual afflicting thoughts that I talk about in, in my book um it's or sloth as it was originally talked about it's just kind of like I don't have spiritual joy and I'm not gonna I'm I'm um, not going to put in the work. I, I, I'm just sick of it. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and there's a there's a temptation. It's not a sin. It's a temptation, but it's not a sin until you really are actively attached to it and and you're really like going for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? And we'll and we will sin in those ways. And I think that's that's normal too. It's not like mm -hmm. <gasps> it's it's kind of like lust or anger. It, you know, you'll you'll have the temptations. You'll do them, and then you'll be like, well, that's also because I'm like a, a mammal, <laughs> you know, right. um, but the loneliness where we, the, the seductiveness of loneliness that makes us, maybe the word is wallow, or maybe the word is like take up residence in a disposition of loneliness instead of um, just kind of make, ask questions of it like you've been doing, make almost make friends with it or just you know, there's a there's a whole different thing. So anyway, that that really, I guess that sparked my muse, Charlotte, and <laughs> it made me think about how do we treat these different parts of us that are that are there. And I don't think that they're they're not pathologies, but sometimes we cooperate with the wrong things yeah. and and make it worse for ourselves. Definitely, and um, I think that's all mixed up and kind of complex on how that can happen. And it probably happens different ways for different people. Um, I know that I can get stuck in loneliness just when I'm tired and, mm -hmm. you know, I start thinking things that aren't true and it just feels like there's too much, it takes too much energy to do something that might make me feel like I belong more. Um, mm -hmm. in different ways. And um, yeah, and, and sometimes I'm like, well, it's okay to be that way. Like if that's where we're at right now, it's where we're at and it's kind of normal for, like you said, it's kind of a normal thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think remembering that loneliness is normal kind of can help us get out of that space too. You know, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this doesn't have to be all consuming um suffocating mm -hmm. thing you know mm -hmm. it can just right. be there and yeah then I you know figure out how I belong even though there's this loneliness often yeah it's this book I um read and I had Lisa Dr. Lisa Feldman Barrett on and she talks about how emotions are made and the word made you know it's this this like provocative thing well how can you make them you know they just happen right and you know emotions are are um our brain's predictions basically they're they are based on they can be based on chemicals and, and things like that but they're also mostly based on our pre previous experiences and and perceived threats and whatever so so that the more threats you have the more you'll predict them you know mm -hmm. the more loneliness you have the more you'll predict and experience loneliness and so uh it doesn't mean that it's made up it's not like you're it's not like it's um I mean, it's, in a sense you're creating your own reality but that's what your brain is trying to do the best it can <laughs> you're just like i will prepare you for what is going to happen and you should be prepared that you are alone <laughs> and and so it's but understanding that the brain is going to be trying to keep you safe and trying to keep you in stasis and normal you know equilibrium it, it's good to know that you have to you have to break cycles of and patterns of thought 
into different into different thoughts. It, it's really a fascinating way to look at how the brain works, and she has other mm -hmm. other things in there too that kind of fly in the face of almost everything people have been taught, including mm -hmm. that awesome movie about feelings, where the angry you know the angry dashboard. There's the mm -hmm. dashboard of the brain, and you know that it basically is not actually like that at all. Although that was a really helpful movie actually for mm -hmm. me, but mm -hmm. then. Um, you know, different models can teach us different things. But was, is there anything else you'd like to say before um, we, I pop you down off of the screen and, and move on to something different? Would you like to say um, anything else? I think that I'd just like to respond to what you said about um, the book you just mentioned. I do think that's why, I mean, it sounds like um, it's connected to what we give our attention to, right? So. If I'm noticing my loneliness, I'm giving my attention to that, then I'm going to notice it more in the future, mm -hmm. which might be my brain's way of protecting me. But also, if we notice our belonging, past and present, yeah. it will help us. Like, it can work in the positive way, too. Yeah. Right? Like yes. That will help us notice our belongings in the future. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't scare me to hear you say, you've experienced a lot of loneliness, so you might experience more. <laughs> it um, it just makes me go, oh, well, I've also experienced a lot of belonging and I'll mm -hmm. experience more of that too, so. Yeah, and and also it's experiencing it, and, and that means experiencing it without any reflection. Mm -hmm. So once you reflect, then you're not really experiencing it as one with yourself, you're kind of a witness to it. So as you're a mm -hmm. witness to the, the feeling, there's a diff it's something else is happening you know so yeah. you're you're not you're not taken on a ride it's it's a whole different thing by the cunning still, charms by the cunning charms <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah it's like you can still experience loneliness and and be a witness to it then there's the thing where you're just like on a roller coaster and you're just like oh my god i hate my life and we've all been there we've all been crushed and totally alone and lonely and we cannot understand life besides what we're feeling and and that's what it's like to have you know something difficult happen to you or to feel abandoned and that's yeah. that's what it is but it's in that reflecting like well how does my brain how does my brain work is it going to try to protect me yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and so i can understand that it's doing a great job might be working too hard but right. it it's going to do that to help me and i can also appreciate that and then i can also input things that that create new patterns but not it's not like it's doing a bad thing you know it's like you're it's it's creating a way to find belonging like you're like like where you got to your brain did the right thing it's like i'm trying to tell you you need belonging right. <laughs> and you're like i bet i need belonging yeah. <laughs> you know that's exactly what is supposed to happen i think is mm -hmm. it creates a desire for yeah. for the thing that you need and so yeah. um this is so everybody who's listening to this now or i'm moving it into i'm moving it into view here this is the book and it's for the November, I'm sorry, the December reading. And this is great because it's like, I think I, I told Charlotte, this is evergreen. You're going to always have problems with loneliness. And um, one way or another, because maybe because technology makes us feel lonelier, maybe because our friends move away or our kids move away. With My daughter is just got accepted to the college she was hoping to get accepted to. She got her t-shirt today and they're like, okay. you're in. And I was like, I mean, she's gone in a few months. And I'm like, yeah. she's just starting to bake, so this is going to be a tra tragedy. Um, but it's it's really we always will have these periods of time where it's much more intense. So it's a very good book, and I thank you for writing it, Charlotte, and Thanks and also for, uh, for joining me today. Uh, it's been fun to talk to you again. Yeah. So thank you so much, now I'll say goodbye, and uh, I'll move on to something I had promised. Um, that was really fun and it kind of worked out technology wise i mean who would have thought so i wanted to read a p portion of my book that's not out yet and this is actually very similarly related about belonging uh there's uh, a table of contents from my book actually let's see if i can even find there's well i'll tell you there's a chapter in the book called predators and prey and it's about the contradictions that we have in our 
inner world. There's predatory types of elements in our inner world, and then there's vulnerable prey type elements. And they're not opposing enemies of each other. They are just kind of different sides of ourselves. And they exist to keep us safe, to keep us stabilized. And sometimes they get out of control and there's like an infestation. So um, what I wrote is something about foxes. And I was going to re do a little reading here so that you get an idea of some part of this chapter. And so the um, character of the fox and the character of the rabbit are both used in Native American folklore and other folklore from around the world over the ages as trickster characters. And trickster characters in myth and story are often these characters that defy physical boundaries or social societal rules. Um, and we have them today. We have the tricksters that are kind of goofy, comical ones. We have Bugs Bunny and we have Wiley Coyote. And they're both trickster creatures. Sometimes they get into trouble. Sometimes they dupe humans. And we learn really silly things from, from those kinds of the tricksters. But the tricksters in Native American myths, we learn things about life or about selfishness if the trickster makes a mistake. And we learn all sorts of things. So in my book, I wanted to talk about the fox as a trickster character where we can learn about the contradictions in our personalities and stay with them and meet them head on instead of being afraid of them or running from them or not paying them any mind. So this is actually from page 126 in the book. And um, I noticed that my, I'm going to have to charge up my um, computer soon. So this will have to probably be only a few more minutes because I don't want to completely conk out with battery power here. So I'll read this little portion of my book and hopefully it'll give you a, a taste of what's coming and whet your appetite for the whole rest of the book. So this is Untamed Foxes. Let me get a little drink. <laughs> Just excuse me for a second. In Native American folklore and in ancient stories around the world, the fox serves as a trickster figure. A fox is foxy, wild and clever, but also vulnerable and shy. When I read the book, The Little Prince, author Antony, Antony de saint Exupéry, sorry, my French is horrendous, uh, gave me some insights about my inner trickster fox. In this now classic tale, the little prince has an encounter with a wild fox. Witness how the wild fox and the little prince long to know each other better in deep friendship. Come and play with me, proposed the little prince. I am so unhappy. I cannot play with you, said the fox. I am not tamed. Ah, please excuse me, said the little prince. But after some thought, he added, what does that mean tame? You do not live here, said the fox. What is it you are looking for? I am looking for men, said the little prince. What does it mean to tame? Men, said the fox. They have guns and they hunt. It is very disturbing. They also raise chickens. These are their only interests. Are you looking for chickens? No, said the little prince. I am looking for friends. What does it mean tame? It is an act too often neglected, said the fox. It means to establish ties. To establish ties? That's, it's just that said the fox. To me, you are nothing more than a little boy who is just like a hundred thousand other little boys. I have no need of you, and you, on your part, have no need of me. To you, I am nothing more than a fox like a hundred thousand other foxes. But if you tame me, then we shall need each other. To me, you will be unique in all the world. To you, I shall be unique in all the world. Please, tame me, said the fox. I very, I want to very much, said the little prince, but I have not much time. I have friends to discover and a great many things to understand. No one understands the things, sorry, <laughs> one only understands the things that one tames, says the fox. Men have no more time to understand anything. They buy things already made in, at the shops, but there is no shop anywhere where one can buy friendship. And so men have no friends anymore. If you want a friend, tame me. 
As I read this for the first time, te tears streamed down my face. After too many years of feeling divided and wounded, the fox's sentiment was akin to mine. The wild parts of me felt unbefriended. What would it mean to be known to myself and be tamed? I would have to move toward this familiarity, a kind of taming, before I could offer any meaningful or lasting befriending to others. This kind of taming, if you will, doesn't mean forcing ourselves into a domesticated version of something we are not. It means establishing ties with our innermost and largely unknown selves. It is how we come home again to our own embrace and love the spot that is our wild soul so that we may become realigned with a felt sense of divine love. I'll just stop there because my battery is creepily low. <laughs> and I hope that, uh, that was at least a little interesting to you. The book I mentioned when when we were talking, when you get a chance. Oh, the book. Oh, the book I mentioned by Lisa Feldman Barrett, I believe is called um, How Emotions Are Made. And <laughs> thanks for So yeah, Charlotte says, I love the idea of being tamed and how that connects us to ourselves and each other. I do too. And The Little Prince is by far one of the most, <sighs> it's, it's like, it's such a beautiful little book. You can get up, you can pick up a used copy for like $3 and read it, Charlotte. I mean, it'll change your life if you haven't already. It's, and it's a beautiful way about taming that, not taming, but befriending that part within us. But also we need each other to, to get those rough edges off of each other. And, and we hide, we hide from each other. Um, and that's been a, a book that I've given to friends and said, you'll understand me I'm the fox, you know, you're the fox, I'm, I'm a rabbit, you're a rabbit, and we, we have these parts of ourselves that are fearful and vulnerable and clever and shy and, and wild. <laughs> so um, that story and that means a lot to me, that book, The Little Prince. So that's another one I'd recommend, definitely read that, and it's very short. But the best part to me is that little section in there with the little prince and the fox talking to each other and becoming friends and then when they have to separate that's a beautiful section of the book too so if anybody has any questions you could pose a question to me if you'd like and um, I also wanted to mention that I have I'm doing a pen palling situation with anybody who wants to send me um, a pen pal here's my my PO box is P.O. Box, I'm going to type it in here, 146, and it's Cresona, PA 17929. If you want to send me um, a letter, I have some really cool stamps. Look, I've got, like, I love the Muppets. I'm such a Muppets fan. And I got some cool stuff, and I got some cool um, stationery from my friend in Canada who has a paper, papery company. And so I'm excited to start pen palling a little bit because that's the spiritual practice to me, pen palling and writing letters, slowing way, way down so that your your thoughts slow down and you're writing to the, to the speed of writing, handwriting, which for me is very time consuming. <laughs> so if any of you want to pen pal me as a spiritual practice and have a kind of form of spiritual direction in a sense, uh, you're invited to do that. It won't cost you anything except for a stamp and envelopes and stuff. And so I um, invite you to do that if you'd like. And hopefully we'll do another lunch break. I wanna do some of these lunch breaks every once in a while to break in and um, maybe do a spiritual practice, maybe invite an author on, or maybe um, read a portion of my book. But I thank you so much, all of you for coming, all of you who are gonna be watching the replay. Um, and stay tuned again if you follow me try to go up to where my face is up there in the corner and click on it and it'll say i have two followers try to make that number go up <laughs> follow me because it shouldn't have just two uh, follow as many people as you can so that when uh, they're interested in something you can find out what some of those things are and you can join up with some other live streams that'll be really interesting and um there's a lot of really neat ones for people who like books. So follow me on that. And then when I do another one, maybe you can come on and do it. Um, any, if anybody else has 
any questions, you could type them if you'd like, or maybe we'll sign off and I'll just give you a benediction and a blessing. So may the God of all peace and grace grant you strength, grant you favor, grant you the riches of God's presence and be with you now and forever. In Jesus' holy name, amen. I wish you goodbye.